Hello again. It's time for the visit with the person of high strangeness. Uh, time really flies. I've been out of town a couple of times already, and uh, it seems I need to get back to Olympia. That's where we tape these shows. And so I'm not as mobile this summer than uh, I usually am. And so some of the friends just going to have to visit with me uh, this way because I just don't have the um, physical time to drive all over the country this year. An uh, interesting thing happened the other day. Uh, a gentleman called and actually came over and um, he said that he really enjoys the shows. And uh, please keep in mind, I get lots of phone calls, but this one was a little special in as much as he actually came and made an appointment with me and spent some time with me. And I so appreciate the local support uh, that I get so sometimes. and. Uh, because it does take a lot um, to prepare for the shows and for me to go places. So I really do appreciate the local support. And then, of course, thanks to all the friends in Colorado and Lansing and, and Anchorage, and that goes without saying. And again, to the gentleman, I really appreciate that you doing that. And um, it really lifted my spirits. The other thing I ended up with, a lady. Now, I saw she didn't come to my house, but she came. Uh, saw me at the store, and she had seen on the shows that I um, collect alligators. So she gave me an alligator for my hat. I'll put it like that. And I thought that was really thoughtful. So again, thank you very much, because I feed uh, on your energy, uh, same as you do on mine. This is the, the second show in a series, um, indirectly of four, but the second uh, one was the emotional feedback system that I have done with my guest, Catherine uh, Peels. How are you? I'm great. And I'm so glad you could work me into your busy schedule <laughs> again. Ditto. Ditto. Yeah, I understand that you're going to be moving away here shortly, so we have to pick your brain as much <laughs> as we can today while we can. Mm -hmm. Well, what's left of it, you're welcome to have. <laughs> yeah, between the two of us, we'll, yes, yes. we'll come up with one complete um, brain. You know, do you have email? I do. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed how emails, uh, they sort of crossing, they coming back, uh, they n show errors when it's being delivered. And I think it has to do with the planets. So electronics just are not functioning very well. Have you noticed that? Well, I think um, we're also electronic beings with the uh, electrical aspect yeah. of emotion. Mm -hmm. and I haven't been feeling great lately. <laughs> That's right. And yeah. it's really been affecting men. Um, they've been really struggling with themselves. And so if uh, the solar flares, actually, if they, if they affect the Earth, the planet as a whole like that, um, we're really on an emotional teeter-totter. Is that the word? A teeter-totter? Teeter-totter, yeah. you know, the thing that goes up and down? And I think it works both ways. Mm -hmm. um, since we not only receive energy from our environment, but we put energy back into That's our environment, right. the more collective pain and emotional dissonance that we have as a species, mm -hmm. the more we're likely to create um, dissonance in mm -hmm. the ecosystem as well. And I don't mean just through our ignorance of ecological issues, but th literally through our energy. There mm -hmm. really is a connection between the human energy system and, and the energy of the as solar whole, system. That's and right. Sure. As, as a whole, so we've really been struggling. So it's really an appropriate time for us to finish this show. So because today we're going to show uh, the friends how everything they've learned from you, how they can put it into action. Um, but before we do that, did you see The Green Mile? I loved that movie. I thought it was beautiful. Can I get your input on it? Well, I always see movies on many, many, many different levels of mm -hmm. abstraction, and I'm always delighted when something comes into the mainstream that is received very well, that speaks to the, sort of the higher um, levels of human experience. Mm -hmm. And that was a really beautiful story for a lot of reasons. Um, the idea of the empath uh, is beautiful because we are all empathically connected to one another mm -hmm. through our feelings. To the friends that don't know what an empath is, an empath is a person um, that takes on other people's pain <laughs> and suffering. And I believe the reason he, uh, they really visualized it really nice when he had the 
whatever it was coming <laughs> out, and that was there for the purpose. Uh, so people could visualize and see something was going on here because usually when we as empaths get rid of things, it doesn't look like that. We just, it, it just isn't so visible. Well, I sort of, um, one, of, one of the reasons that I've been interested in studying emotion all my life is that I have probably a little bit more sensitivity to e um, the emotional sense than the norm. Because mm -hmm. um, I can sometimes read information in people's emotional uh, responses, like, you know, you talk about nonverbal behavior, but that there's literally information that almost is perceived to me like the dark stuff coming out of that guy's mouth. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's that obvious to me when I see an emotional thing happening in someone else. And um, I, I don't know if it's a gift or a curse, <laughs> But it's, it's a little it's, bit of both. It, uh -huh. it is a little bit of both, and sometimes it's incredibly difficult to see something going on with someone and know that you're not being able to communicate with them because that's there, or that they're misunderstanding you or misperceiving you. And it's it's, but it's also it's always been great to mm -hmm. put together the um, all of the, the the clues of the puzzle what emotion is. Which is, of course, what I what I do. Yeah, and then on the, on the, I'm still on the green mile here. Then on the flip side, it is for this being to have um, very much like powder. Did you see powder? Yes, That's I did. That's another movie. Yes. Uh, where these these beings, these people, this what appears to be human beings, they just appear, and you can't really trace them one way or the other, and they're just here for a time to teach us something, and then they just, you know, they just have a way of going home, so to speak. I think we're all here doing that. Doing that, yeah. <laughs> and then like like Omar in, in my book, and the moral of the story is, uh, one of the things that's real interesting to me is when, no matter where I go, first thing people say, how's Omar? And that's the, that's, uh, the gentleman that's in the, in the prison. Um, and in the book I explained how he ended up there and why, and now we even know why he's there. He just took that on and because of the way he chose his path, he was sort of the cornerstone, him and a woman named Gypsy Hurley. And as a result of that, the people in my circle now, they are all where they're supposed to be because this one person was willing to take on this task. So for those of you that haven't seen The Green Mile, it's out on video now, and if, if none of that uh, strikes your fancy, try the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he wonderful? It's, mm -hmm. it's quite a moving piece of art, I think. So today, what we're going to talk about is, um, not we, you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully it'll they be we. Go, uh -huh. All the things that we learned, how you apply that to everyday problems, and I'm sure that uh, one of the main things the friends are interested in is relationships. That seems to be the big thing right now. And uh, so if you could give us a hand with that, um, somebody would really appreciate that. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, well, their relationships is obviously a really, really huge um, area where the implications of the emotional system have a profound impact on your life. Um, it really comes down to first having a relationship with yourself where the mind and body are sort of united when you're following the feeling system and, and making the corrections that it's asking, connecting that action cycle and making sure you're consciously avoiding the fight and flight corrections. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to be in a position where you can relate to another person far better. Mm -hmm. um, Only thing is in a relationship you have two. Exactly. <laughs> but I think what's really interesting about relationships is what we were just talking about the Green Mile, how one person is experiencing their own feelings. Mm -hmm. And the feeling system is always giving you, the owner of the feeling, a message about you, mm -hmm. about what you need to do, what you need to change to improve your life. The other person has that same thing going on in them. And so if they're attending to their feelings and you're attending to your feelings, we're going to be on this course. But when you get together in a relationship, you're building a new thing that's like a new self that's part you, part me, and it's, it's called we. So the dynamics of information exchange are going to be a lot more complex and wonderful, actually, because not only do you have just your own mind to help you process your own information, but you have feedback from somebody who sees 
what you're doing that you're not consciously aware of. Mm -hmm. And in a relationship where you have really loving trust and that your partner's in a spiritual journey, your um, self-development, your life process, your journey is uh, enhanced tremendously by a good relationship. Mm -hmm. Now, do, if we want to use the word relationship in a broader sense, I have a relationship with my doctor, with my lawyer, with my, with my staff. And so, because when you use that word, a lot of times people think that has to do with male, love, female, but yeah. it's really not. Relationships and, and love is not really even the same, is it? Not really. At, well, it is and it isn't. There's a continuum of anybody that you interact with, even somebody that walks across the street two miles down the road. If you catch eye contact or you're even in thought, there's, there's an interaction that's going on there. Um, so if you're aware of the dynamics of your own emotional system, you, you're going to um, be much better able to know when it's time to say something, when it's time to um, walk away, mm -hmm. when it's time to uh, let the person know that they've fallen into um, a defensive pattern and that be accepting of what's going on. Um, when when you documented uh, summarized is a better word to show a uh, root awakening to mental illness uh, with Mona, one of the things that you touched on very briefly is sometimes when we have this ease, it's very much connected with your diet and, and allergic reactions. So can we go there for a minute versus? Um, Sure. Medication. You go anywhere you want. And I'm a little concerned about your mic. Let me see what it looks like. Okay, it just disappeared. <laughs> so go right ahead. Okay, well, um, since the emotional system is intertwined throughout your chemistry, your electricity, everything about your body is, is influenced by mm -hmm. uh, your feeling system, that there um, a lot of disease processes, um, whether it's depression, manic depression, schizophrenia, uh, uh, the chemistry of your emotional system is going to play a huge role in how severe those symptoms are. That's People right. have a genetic predisposition toward uh, any one of those syndromes or even addiction or anything else. There's uh, things that you're going to be doing in your life that are going to be affecting your chemistry and there's two huge groups. Uh, the first group is, is your diet. Everything that you put into your body is, of course, fuel for the body. And the, the concepts that we have, uh, the patterns, that we, the attitudes about food are, have gone way away from the, the idea of fuel and nourishment for the body and more about gratifying taste. And there's so many cultural things that are mm -hmm. packed with misconceptions that we're quite literally um, away from the way our natural system ought to be. So our diet um, alone can influence our emotional system profoundly in ways that make, uh, mm -hmm. first of all, you have to have a healthy system to have the system work. Anyone that's experiencing these kinds of fluctuations really needs to look at their diet and make sure that they're eating things that are not throwing their system, and I highly recommend everyone know what they're allergic to and what they're not allergic to, and have a sensible, whole food sort of approach to food. Mm -hmm. So technically what you're speaking of is when, um, I used to drink, um, ever, well, actually I used to drink quite often, that's because of the culture I came from. And uh, cognac was very pleasant. Uh, <laughs> I, I was just fine with that. But vodka, now. I could not drink vodka because I got very aggressive. So in Isn't other words, what are, you, what are you saying? If I had my emotional intelligence and my system in place, the vodka would have affected me different? Is that what you're telling me? Um, well, yes and no. Uh, the first half of what I was saying was diet. The other half is managing your emotional system in a way that you're not creating mm -hmm. negative but chemistry I, and stress. But I didn't know that at the time. I was just okay. out there. Um, <laughs> If, when, whatever influence something has on your body is, is going to have a lot to do with the way your chemistry is. Mm -hmm. um, there are specific things. I know, for example, there are certain things I can't drink. I, they either leave me feeling terrible in the morning or I'm allergic to them and they shut my nose down. Mm -hmm. I can't breathe. Um, but if 
but there's like one kind of wine that, I, that works really well with my chemistry. Mm -hmm. So if I want to imbi imbibe it on a little alcohol, that's the one. But it's taken me a lot of testing and being aware of how it has affects my chemistry. A lot of times alcohol is extremely depressing on the system mm -hmm. and the next day you feel really depressed and it's being aware of how whatever you're eating is affecting your emotional system because if, if your system's off kilter you're not going to be able to understand the messages anyway because you're going to getting, be getting mixed chemical messages. That's what a lot of these S disease situations are really about. And if we are, first of all, get the right idea about food, that's half the game. The second of, is, of course, this understanding your, your emotional system and not letting these corrective signals build up all of the stress hormones that are going to affect your body and your mind in a negative way. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes different colognes react different to different people. Would that be included in the allergy pattern since everything is connected? Yes, everything is it connected. Would. And um, what I found, and there's a lot of subjectivity mm -hmm. obviously in, in this sort of speculation, but that people who find themselves with highly allergic reactions have emotional patterns of um, not being able to accept certain situations. And it's, it creates an immune response that says, if I can't accept it, it's not self. Mm -hmm. So everything that they can't accept as part of their own personal experience, even if it's, especially if it's another person who makes them crazy or mm -hmm. uh, anybody that invokes a negative emotion in you, you're not fully accepting that person. And that's mm -hmm. what the corrective signal is telling you. And the more we let that go and the more we build up patterns of, well, I'm just going to avoid that person or whatever, you quite literally, your immune system, which is also based on a self, not self distinction, has a literal allergic reaction to anything that you feel emotional stress about. I know at least two ladies that's allergic to her husband. <laughs> <laughs> it's time and to probably you know go to talk I mean. to a marriage counselor. <laughs> yeah. Well, seriously, yeah. um, that there's such a, a huge interlinking between all of these systems, and the implications for health are phenomenal. In fact, one of the people I might be working with. Um, is studying the neuropeptide chemical dialogue of the body, and there she's put together an AIDS um, yeah, let's, drug. Yeah, let's go there for a minute. Uh -huh. I'm a little familiar. I've heard the story before, so maybe you like to well, repeat that. Well, actually, it's probably the end of her trials are coming up really, really soon. They've been testing this new drug called peptide T. Mm -hmm. It's based on, on this interactive model where emotional um, neuropeptides are exchanging information between body and mind, like there's, it's a one unit body mind rather than the brain creates disease or the genes in the body create mm -hmm. disease. It's an interactive process. So the approach to AIDS had been um, that it's, it's got to be in the genes and so we have to attack the genes or we have to attack the brain or interrupt whatever's mm -hmm. going on. Where hers is more um, recognizing how the emotional chemicals either can bond or um, block mm -hmm. receptor cells. So what's happening when you have an immune response is that e the, the little cell is saying this is not me and it's not, I'm not going to accept the chemical, it's not me. But and it's other times it's saying that is me, I'm going to let it bond and do its job and mm -hmm. make the chemical change. So if you have messed your system up, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be letting in the wrong things to have happen. So her system is, has identified the AIDS and it blocks it at the, so it can't go in and infect the cell. Mm -hmm. And it's quite, it's, uh, it, uh, we're hoping that she has a lot of success with it. In 1999, we did a show. It was called AIDS, uh, uh, an opinion. And we had a couple of healers that uh, did some work sort of similar where they dealt with the emotional trauma of AIDS patients. And they were doing really well. One was Jana G. I don't know if you know her or not. But some of the local people are, have sort of attempted that. And from what I hear, they have really good results. Well, anyone, anyone that is suffering from any sort of an immune response, whether it's a cancer or a situation or an allergy, I mean, or something as severe as AIDS, your life is going to be improved dramatically, no, no matter how long it's going to be, um, if, if you start paying attention to your feelings and, and seeing what they're telling you to do. And it's, it really is common sense. There's a lot of abstract concepts here, but we're talking about a sense that's telling you what you need and what you don't need. Mm -hmm. and most of us are so conditioned to ignore it and to deny it because the world tells us what we're supposed to do. It mm -hmm. tries to control us from the outside. That there, our internal control system is frustrated. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, you dramatically improve your health by 
answering that. And, and in fact, that's going to be the way we ultimately find out what our human potentials are for creating health with our very our mind. And if anyone is actually experimenting with meditative and visualization exercises, I, I highly recommend that you you put the emotional component in there as well. That you're if you're visualizing health in a particular area or vibrancy, that you manifest the feeling of joy and faith mm -hmm. and think about something that makes you feel that way. And you can flood your body with the very positive um, growth promoting hormones mm -hmm. and chemicals that positive emotion mm -hmm. does for your body and it counteracts the negative ones. There's been some really good results with clustered water. Uh, I've heard that. Because, because what it does, and uh, to remind you, we did three shows from different perspectives on clustered water where um, the, the water goes directly to your cells and restructure the cellular memory of your cells. And so some of the friends have had between massage, some meditation, and uh, reprogramming their cells with clustered water. They've been doing really well. Now, on the other hand, the fastest thing right now is even with the children, and we've talked about Redland in detail mm. with some of the guests. Um, anytime we have a problem, we want to run for a pill. Uh, and so could you maybe um, wait it out for us here? Well, I think that it's a real dangerous trend um, that over the years there have been more and more disorders being cataloged in, mm -hmm. I don't know if I brought it today, in the, the DSM-4 book. book, yeah. book yeah. And more and more and more chemicals being thrown at these disorders when really what's going on, and I mean obviously there, there are issues, but the medical model, the disease model is that this is something that's broken and we need a chemical to fix it, like there's an imbalance in the brain, a chemical imbalance that's always going to be that way. They really don't recognize how we are creating those very imbalances mm -hmm. by the way that we're thinking. Our emotional system is telling us how to think and how to act in ways that are that make us fully human and, and full of purpose. And since we have denied that, we have these negative signals continuously going off and it's it's <laughs> that's the chemical imbalance, but it's not something that's genetic. It's not something that's going to be there forever and ever, but they're, they're approaching it like it is. So you're going to have to be on this medication the rest of your life. And yet most people who are on those kinds of medication, and I've, and I've experimented a little bit them myself, is that it dulls your emotional system so much that it changes your human experience and it makes it less than it ought to be. Now certainly medication is better than being trapped in a psychotic nightmare, mm -hmm. but um, like I said, I have worked with people who have managed and completely overcome those kinds of, the worst kinds of mental disorders, which I consider schizophrenia as bad as it gets, mm -hmm. uh, by really looking and understanding what, what's going on with their chemistry system. Mm -hmm. And one person in particular had so many allergies and he was trying to live a, a specific vegetarian lifestyle that his, he was not giving his body what it needed and it was throwing him into the extreme experiences that his creative consciousness was able to experience mm -hmm. and trapping him like nightmares. Yeah, you know, like on a personal note, um, I've been watching a lot of television lately and uh, they actually advertise pharmaceuticals now, <sighs> regular pills. <laughs> Isn't it awful? And, and it'll go something like this, uh, you know, if, if you're unhappy, we now have a pill for you. Um, so the only, the only thing, the only thing it will happen to you, it'll give you headaches, it'll interfere <laughs> with your sex drive, it'll keep you from urinating, and it'll give you cramps. But you'll but be you'll happy. Be happy. <laughs> yeah. So the, yeah, yeah, so it's I scary. <laughs> And, and I think that we're um, finally beginning to recognize, and that's one of the reasons why I'm excited about participating in the positive psychology movement, is it really is recognizing, hey, wait a minute, we have all of this, what goes wrong, but what goes right and right. why? Mm -hmm. And that's why um, the, the emotional component is, I think that that's a really good outlet to be able to discuss these ideas and get them into the mainstream and turn things around a little bit. Because once we recognize, we have this sense Mm -hmm. and it is entwined throughout our entire electrical and chemical system that if we're not working with it, it's mm -hmm. going to be throwing us chemically off, off keel. And every one of us is going to eventually end up taking something mm -hmm. unless we figure out what we're doing that's creating the situation. Yeah, I'd like to put a little face on this here. It's like um, a, a while back we did a show and um, 
I was blue, uh, the lights, uh, for <laughs> some reason, I just got hung up in that blue light and I was totally blue and I was happy, but I mean, I wasn't happy, but okay. So I made a comment and say, well, whatever you do, I don't want to be blue again. And so actually the last show you and I did, um, I was yellow, <laughs> which was very positive because I wasn't blue, you see. And so when we look at the positive, and, and enjoy that, it takes the stress out of it. Who wants to be perfect? See, now you're kind of getting to one of the main things I wanted to talk about today is that when you're using this sense and mm -hmm. when you're allowed to develop your emotional sense and go through how nature has designed us to develop, which most of us really haven't, uh, you get to what I call um, this the state of conscious competence. And along with that comes what I call the three perspectives. And it's a way of looking at life. And when we talked about the motives and the actions, mm -hmm. the outcomes, the evaluations, and the corrections, when we're using our system the way nature wants us to, and we're answering its call, we're going to make corrections that change our motives. And we end up with what I call the three character perspectives. Mm -hmm. There are three things that positive emotion is pulling us toward, and negative emotion is pushing us away. You know, uh, it, well, it's pushing us that way and pulling us on, from both of those directions. So there, the three perspectives, and anyone, even if what we've been talking about is sort of abstract, and um, I apologize for that and, and my deficiencies in communicating it at this sort of level, but that um, what you can do to gain immediate advantages of emotional intelligence, even if you're not in tune with your own feelings yet, is to borrow from these three perspectives. And That's right. you're going to be able to perceive life in the way that emotional intelligence would help you. And the more you do that, the more you put the belief structures in there that create those emotional experiences and that's going to pull you sort of from the back in. And the first one of those perspectives um, I call the, uh, the we perspective. Because as we develop our emotional system, we, the first emotion that we're supposed to learn is to trust one another. When, when mom comes and answers, answers and gives us the bottle and we cry and, and, and then we're happy again, all that we learn trust and then our emotional system begins to recognize how we're empathically connected to everyone else and so what that leaves us after we're completely developed is this perspective to where your emotional system isn't just about me since it is a system of self-regulation mm -hmm. your self-concept is is in this we perspective mm -hmm. so if you can evaluate any situation through that lens, it's like putting on a different pair of glasses that sees things not just in your own self-interest, but that the, it's a bigger self-interest, that you're going to be able to perceive the outcome in a, in a way that's going to give you a positive emotion instead of a negative emotion. Yeah, right, so, because today we're working on fixes. Exactly. Yeah, so. So, for example, if you're driving down the freeway mm -hmm. and someone cuts you off in traffic, if you're like me, <laughs> or, or most normal drivers, there will be a, a feeling of anger, or at least frustration, and maybe even a little bit of fear if he came close enough to you, cutting you off. Um, and that's one of the basis of road rage, and of course that's one of the big mm -hmm. issues people are trying to tackle now. But that immediately, if you're in that moment, this is a technique I have in here called reframing, to, that was the automatic response was mm -hmm. to defend yourself in the negative emotion you know, like that. Now, what you can immediately do is reframe the experience by using the we perspective and thinking, okay, what if I was in his shoes? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that guy is um, late for work. Maybe he's got a woman, he's going to the hospital. Maybe he's this, maybe he's that. What it does is it makes you realize that you could have done that just as easily. And if you had made a mistake like that, you would want to be forgiven or at least have compassion for human ignorance. Mm -hmm. OK, I was, a, I was like that once, and, and I wanted people to forgive me. It immediately um, diffuses the negative emotion, mm -hmm. and it replaces a better thinking strategy about it that you're likely to be able to tap into the next time it happens. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the process of reframing. And that's one of the perspectives that's incredibly powerful, mm -hmm. especially in relationships. Yeah, Monica Ryan Smith, we did a show on fears and chaos. And she used an example uh, where some, it's, it's sort of what, what, what you said here, that sometimes when something like that happens, a real quick respond, oh, it's just a cloud. Because a cloud only stays there for a very brief moment. Beautiful. And, pff, and it's gone. And the next time you see it, you wouldn't recognize it because it has it has changed shapes again. 
That's mm -hmm. that's really beautiful. In fact, um, it, the emotional system is so powerful that get, we get swept away in the feeling. And if for anybody that's ever been enraged or depressed, it's it's a terrible reality to be in. So any little tools that you can use to hang on and faith is one of the most positive emotion that cancels out almost everything mm -hmm. and that when a negative situation a really horrible catastrophic event befalls you if you know you stop and take a breath and, and have faith that there is meaning in every experience and mm -hmm. that there's something that you're going to be gained and learn from it. it it profoundly diffuses the negative emotions that normally come with something that's unexplained so that's that's another way is always taking a negative and reframing it with a positive emotion, whether it's compassion or faith or um, forgiveness. Those positive emotions are incredibly empowering for turning around mm -hmm. our thinking. Now, if you recall last week, um, I called you uh, because I had a little experience to share with you, and I'm not going to go into the details, but it amounted to eventually, um, it took a very short time for me to get angry. And uh, uh, anger, I, I was angry for a long time, so I'm really working on the anger part here. But by the time I got angry, we went through the emotions that I had already experienced before I got here, like useless, powerless, um, uh, I lost control, I didn't know what to, helpless. So there were all these emotions within seconds before you got to... Um, <laughs> Isn't it amazing it's how much information is available? Stuff, yeah. And then, but one, once you learn how to maneuver your thinking exactly. into these emotional systems here, it, it's almost like you know when, when, like I say, when you drive your car, you know certain things. Uh, it's just habit. You just, you just go make go around this. You're you go programming around that, positive habits go. to mm -hmm. replace the negative habits when you use reframing. Mm -hmm. And um, what you were saying about. That how easily you get angry. Anger is a really important emotion. Every one of the emotions are very, very important because anything with the negative pole, whether it's fear, anger, sadness, guilt, is always about protection mm -hmm. and it's protecting something that that there's a conflict about and so you're, you, if you take the, you figure out what it is protecting and there's a need structure that's laid out in mm -hmm. here that underlies your emotional dynamic, then you can connect the dots between what it is you need that part of the mode of your need and your plans, you get them in line with each other and everything's going to flow a whole lot smoother. Yeah, yeah, just like driving, you know, one, once you have done the basic patterns and with experience, um, you sort of add your own flair to it. Exactly. And then it just gets to be normal. And, and I want to tell you about the other two perspectives because the reframing is a really powerful technique uh, that you can Im immediately stop and you, you're making the correction the right kind of correction instead of the automatic correction. It's going to stop any what I call emotional baggage from happening because if you're not consciously learning, you're going to be unconsciously learning. There's this animal Pavlovian mm -hmm. conditioning. That's how you get stuff all the way down in your cells. And so if you, you're immediately stopping that and programming what you want into your software instead of letting the bad stuff go in. So the we perspective is really a big one to um, recognize that we are all connected and that we all make the same mistakes, we all do the same things. And it if, we, if you can accept that, acceptance is what shifts a negative feeling to a positive one. Acceptance is always right there in the middle. Mm -hmm. So if you're resisting any reality, that's the corrective signal saying, okay, you created this and now you're resisting it, so that's your clue. But the other, the second, the three, there are three major perspectives that emotion brings to us. The second one is what I call the big picture time perspective. It is the ability to think a very, very long range and to see things in a really big perspective. Um, because short-term pleasure is very different than long-term pleasure. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times what, what I call the mover in emotion, this automatic process that happens, uh, will give us immediate pleasure to get us to protect something. But if, if it's immediate pleasure just for that moment and we have a strategy that works out over the long run, it's going to bring long-term pain. So that's why um, this big picture perspective helps us know consciously in the moment when to choose short-term pleasure and when to avoid it. Now, this might be totally off the wall, but I want to work this in here. Now, we know that men and women's emotions are different. Um, uh, what do you mean? Because uh, they're not, actually. Well, but that's, that's where I'm going with this now. When, when a woman, let, let's say, for instance, Right now, I wouldn't want to be a man because <laughs> they don't know how to conduct themselves because the rules keep changing. 
when a, when a, 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 a woman or female meets a man that she likes, she immediately goes long term. And a man usually just takes his time and goes short term and then leads up to something else. So in my mind, men and women's emotions is two different things. Okay. Uh, that there's a, so <coughs> many, many ideas and many misconceptions out there about, about emotions mm -hmm. that a lot of people are going to think a lot of things. I, what, I think maybe what you're saying is that the male and female have different communication strategies and different um, cultural expectations, things like that. They, I think they wired different. <laughs> well, okay, well, the first thing is everybody has an emotional system. Mm -hmm. Women, I think, are much more attuned to their emotional system because right. from a very young age, it is a cultural tradition that big boys don't cry and, and they're, I mean, they're punished for feeling their feelings and they learn how to suppress their feelings. In fact, I've worked, done a lot of counseling and it's a whole lot easier to share these ideas with women than with men. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm always surprised how incredibly remedial they can be because some of them don't even know the difference between their feeling signals like they might think that everything is fear they might think that um, th there's a very subtle distinction between anxiety and sadness and guilt and they've numbed themselves through these ways habits of avoiding their feelings and you know do the tough man fight flight thing that they literally are um, not aware when they're even feeling a feeling so it's, it's, it's getting them to, to really start f being humming aware mm -hmm. of that and then making the connection between how, what they thought and all of those things. It starts them into this more automatic, intuitive process that women are a little bit more comfortable with. Yeah, because uh, you know, my whole point was we get from here to here somewhere. And while the man is still over here, he's still trying to work through everything. You know, it's, oh, I like you. And let's, you know, next thing you know, you're married and you have a picket fence. And that must be really intimidating to a man. It's terribly intimidating to many men, and um, I really take my hat off to any yeah. man that, that really wants to confront his feelings because it um, there's a whole network of, of, of dynamics that come out once you start looking at your feelings and, and understanding what's going on. And I've got them all spelled out in here pretty well, but there's what I talked about resistance is that we're designed. This is a mechanism that helps us expand our consciousness as we grow, but it protects us to be able to be able to be able to function within whatever we have as our existing consciousness. So, anything that's new is going to have a slightly negative emotional tone to it, because our sense of self does not yet know it; it can't accept it in. And when we recognize that, we realize that there's a small amount of pain in every learning experience. Oh, I thought it was excitement. It, good for you because it actually can be mm -hmm. and that's the difference between um, someone who is more in tune with their emotion and the, the mm -hmm. flow of life and someone who isn't because I know a lot of people who have felt the anxiety associated with a new experience and have taken that flight response and run away from it and have subsequently had a smaller and smaller and smaller existence, mm -hmm. fear of existence and more and more and more fear in their life. So that's really brilliant because on one of these pages I talk about how the negative emotions, once you get acceptance, they, there's a positive polarity and what was once anxiety and fear and when you're really accepting, hey, this is a learning experience, an yeah. opportunity for me to become more conscious, then you embrace it. And it's, it's, it's like, first you think, well, it's a growing pain, and then it's learning anticipation, mm -hmm. and then it's excitement. Hey, here's an opportunity for me to grow. Yeah. And it's a completely different emotional experience, all because you're thinking about it differently. Mm -hmm. So it's actually showing us how to think and how to act in every moment. And we end up with those three perspectives, the we perspective, the big picture time perspective, where if you, if you have a pain in the moment and you, and you want to figure out how to fix it, the, the emotional system gives you the highest rewards when you are looking in the broadest, broadest perspective. And it even pulls you into sort of this area of what you're talking about, karma and afterlife, because even the most devastating and negative experiences do have some sort of meaning. And when you have faith, you have this big picture perspective that gives you compassion and, and faith and positive, the positive emotions, you're far more likely to be able to understand and accept a, a negative situation that you think is a negative situation that might actually be taking you in a much more positive direction. Well, yeah, I, actually, uh, I went on a trip and everything was all in place. And then as soon as I got there, everything changed out of, it just it flipped <laughs> on a dime out of left field. And that normally <coughs> creates negative emotion. Yeah, I, and first thing, I was going to panic, and then I said, no. If I look at it as my job, I'm just here. 
you know, and I will get paid later. And I, and so I was stuck in this hotel in the middle of nowhere for two weeks, but I learned a lot. See, remember we talked about spontaneous competence? Yeah. See, life, there's always going to be change. In fact, the more living you're doing, the more change you're going to be undergoing, because that's life. Life is change. And so the more your emotional system is working for you, the more you're thinking and acting the way it's asking you to, the more empowered you are in every moment without experiencing that kind of stress and that negativity. Mm -hmm. Because every moment becomes a delightful surprise of how your destiny path is unfolding. And it, it really is a completely more wonderful experience mm -hmm. than any other way of approaching life. And, and I've only begun to personally experience some of it. And I am profoundly impressed by how different my experience is with using my emotions rather than letting them run me. Because mm -hmm. I was driven by anger for years and years and years, and not accepting certain things that you shouldn't have to accept. I mean, there's abuse and there's neglect. And I mean, we don't live in a perfect world yet, but the only way we're going to get there is to accept what's happening, understand how it's happening, why it's happening, and consciously change it. Yeah, it's like uh, <laughs> I talk about my landlord issues sometimes, and I think uh, 10 years from now I'm still going to talk about my landlord <laughs> issues. Because even though if that experience is over, it is so profound in my mind that I will never forget it and I will recognize it the next time I see it. Isn't emotion the most powerful teacher there is? Well, I, I'm <laughs> handling it, it well, but I'm, my whole thing is how do I explain to him that it's time for a change for, for his higher self? Okay. But some, we can't control what well, other well, people are feeling. Well, we kind of can't. Well, there's, there's two things I want to say on this. In fact, there's a whole section in here about how to deal with difficult people. Oh, I said what's a landlord. Because there are always going to be people at multiple levels of consciousness. There are always going to be people who really are totally just responding automatically. They're really not consciously showing up in their own lives. They're always going to be there. They're always going to be the people cutting you off on the freeway. They're always going to yeah. be, it's going to be there. And the more you accept that, the more you just recognize it as part of life, mm -hmm. whether we evolve, go away from it eventually, um, the, the more empowered you're going to be in every moment. But what are they learning? Okay, well, they're all on their own track, and in fact, if they're not learning from their mistakes, they're going to be creating them again and again and again. And, and I, I feel, when I used to feel angry at people who were doing things that were hurting me in my life, now I can feel much more compassion. And not at first, it was more pity, and now it's compassion because I know that they're going to they're going to be there until they get it, no matter mm -hmm. how long it takes them. Maybe maybe even more than one life. I I don't know how to evaluate that. However, the big picture perspective lends me more and more in that direction that there really is incredible meaning in in if we're just going to continue to make the mm -hmm. same mistakes until we get it. So if I at this moment uh, experience gratification, he said, a good respond or not? Uh, positive emotion is always good. No, it's not, that's not what I meant. Okay. Are you saying, well, if they don't get it right, they have to do it over and over well, and so over? That so you're feeling gratified about that? <laughs> so what kind of emotion is that? Well, we have, a anger gives us a sense of righteousness and justice. And mm -hmm. we, we want things to be fair. And so there's a part of you that, that knows that the people who look like they're getting away with something really aren't. And you like that because it makes you fair. That's, that's perfectly okay to feel that way. Um, the, the third perspective I wanted to, to share is kind of what we're talking about here is your emotional system is all about you. It's messages for you, on you, and, and you're the only one that can actually change any situation. You have your own power. Everybody else has theirs. Now, there are things certainly that you can do to persuade other people to learn and grow. That's the beauty of, of mm -hmm. any kind of relationship. But you're the only one that you can ever really change anything. So the third perspective that emotion teaches us when we learn everything the hard way is what I call the personal accountability perspective. That's the w when we, we view any outcome as if we are solely responsible for it in every way, shape, and form no matter if somebody else helped create it or mm -hmm. you know no matter if it's there's no fault anywhere it here is a problem it belongs to me it's up to me to solve it period that is one of the most powerful perspectives and the hardest one to get to i think mm -hmm. because the automatic fight and flight response is to run away to not not understand it to just and to to fight to blame somebody else to deny it into entry into your consciousness so when you get to the personal accountability perspective you're really really empowered mm -hmm. because every moment you're going to be saying okay this came my way i accept it 
I'll deal with it, and on we go. So you're, you're creating the changes rather than spinning your wheels, pointing fingers, blaming, mm -hmm. getting, just being mad about it all the time. That really, uh, I, I... It's a powerful I, one. Mm -hmm. I usually, well, usually most of the time, almost always, uh, I'm politically neutral. But in the last few uh, months, I have some friends that, that everybody here met, um, uh, the, the, the friends from Fiji, uh, the fully informed jury association. Oh. And one of the things that we kick around sometime is that, um, that if we take responsibility for our own action, and each person governs themselves. So, I mean, we have to have some basic rules, but we have them, it, and they're our more right. system. That's right. That's why I'm thinking. I have to introduce you're you to getting some it. of you're my getting friends. It. Because, you know, we have more government to have more rules. So if everybody knew what to do, okay. and, and then we could do away with so much more. See, this is our all you need. Our taxes would go down. How great this our This is all you need because, friends. okay, think about this. All Our whole government is based on the fact that we, they need to regulate our right. behavior. That's there's right. rules, there's laws, mm -hmm. there's, guess what? That's not how it works. That's we have right. a self-regulation system, and all of the external regulation in the world is not going to work. That's right. And, and the, the, what, what the personal accountability, and see, emotion teaches you this. Once our society is infused with emotional intelligence, we are going to dismantle a lot of the ridiculous external regulators. Mm -hmm. They're actually creating emotional distress and social disease. Um, there, there are many, many implications, political implications. In fact, I've written extensively about what mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the changes that should be made, and those are the kinds of things that we hope to be able to infuse some um, sanity into with the positive psychology movement, mm -hmm. is to recognize, hey, we, we are run on an internal sensory system of self-regulation. All of our social structures ignore that, deny that, and work against it. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, we can make a lot of catch-up progress when we recognize that all the external controlling systems aren't going to work. That's what yeah. anger is for, is to protect our sense, uh, the most, two most powerful human um, needs that underlie these are, are for freedom and power. They're two sides of the same coin, so we are free to move about and regulate our own behavior. And mm -hmm. once we recognize that that's going on, we take, we get this, the we perspective, the big picture perspective, and the personal accountability perspective. With those three things alone guiding you, you have the highest level of natural morality. You're not going to break any of the laws anyway, because doing so would violate somebody else's that's feeling right. system. Exactly. And but, but it's not, I'm not just saying that these perspectives are good because they're in the Bible or anything else, they bring you the highest positive emotional That's reward right, and the yeah. most success in life. So the short-term pleasure of getting even with somebody mm -hmm. is far um, cheaper and less valuable than the long-term experience of compassion and uh, respect for other human beings. And if everybody had that, that's the kind of world we're supposed to live with. That's how we're supposed to naturally evolve if we're listening to this sense. That's why but it's we spoke, aren't. <laughs> spoken like, a, like two true females because uh, once we get the men to acknowledge how, how they feel things, then maybe we can even it out a little bit. What's ahead for you? What's ahead for me? Mm -hmm. um, um, I plan on sharing these ideas with as many people as possible. Um, I am going to be working in some research associations with some of the people in the psychological community and there are other um, there's a neuroscientist and a biochemist that are also very interested in connecting my work with theirs um, I'm hoping that in the next 20 to 30 years the concept of emotional feedback or that, that emotion is a sense becomes a topic of everyday conversation around the dinner table mm -hmm. and that um, I can be a voice in helping people learn how to use their emotional system it could work, you know, uh, even us older people, we now talk computer talk at one time. We didn't you know what, it, of course. what a DOS was, and it's just all, learn, you know, it's all about behavior. In your book, is it available anywhere? Um, we have your number on, on the show. Well, actually, I'm going to be launching a website pretty soon that, that mm -hmm. has this entire booklet on it, and it can be downloaded. Downloaded. And that's, that's going to be one of the ways that I can fund my nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. I, I started a nonprofit organization to be able to spread this information as far and wide mm -hmm. as possible. And we'll be t stopping to do a little research dalliance to do some more refinement and testing of the... Uh, because the more of this is, that's proven in the laboratory, the, the mm -hmm. sooner we're going to be able to have it more accepted to the people that want those kinds of external acceptances. So um, 
yes, that's going to be out there, and there, there will be a series of uh, journal articles that will be produced that hopefully communicate a lot of these things. So I'm looking at different media outlets and different kinds of ways of sharing, and I have put together the seminar mm -hmm. format, and I've been working with people on the grassroots level, and we might take them into the corporations, what, whatever, op whatever roads unfold. And mm -hmm. I found that when I use my emotional system and try to go, go for this sort of spontaneous competence that things unfold and opportunities arise and that I'm much more conscious of opportunities that are going to get me where I want to go. And I'm far more in charge of my life and my emotional system is letting me know at every moment where, when I'm on or off track. Do you think that, uh, like uh, lots of times we talk about, uh, back to the Green Mile here for a minute, just <laughs> like the man, uh, what was his name? John Coffey, like the drink, only not spelled the same. When he, as a being, agreed to do this, um, and like people like ourselves, I wonder if we really knew what we had to go through to get here. How, how long have you been doing this? <laughs> well, you know, I think everybody really has a personal mission. Mm -hmm. And they know what it is and they're the only ones that know what it is, and their, emotion, their feelings will tell them when they're on it or when they're off of it. Um, I did not know what my mission was. I knew I had something, and I oftentimes was pushed by pain away from something that was really boring or not challenging, and I've had many different professions, and I had to many, work many different mm -hmm. jobs to support this labor of love in, in addition to my family. Yeah, we talked about that in when the friends met you as a person a yeah. uh, long time ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it hasn't been easy at all, but um, I don't think easy does it. <laughs> um, I really think that if we confront every challenge, and we have just a general idea that we want to make be the best we can be and to fulfill whatever our potentials are and that we trust life to put the opportunities in our way and if you use those three perspectives mm -hmm. uh, you're gonna get there and um, I, I encourage everyone to dream as big as you possibly can no dream is too big uh, there's plenty that can be done in a lifetime and um, Many years ago, I was derailed from this. I was on a PhD track and doing very, very well, mm -hmm. and was devastated when things sort of just fell apart. It was like the universe had given me this calling and suddenly had pounded me down with just every negative thing that you can think of, short of death. And um, it was a terrible, terrible experience. Mm -hmm. And if I had had the big picture perspective and um, the personal That's accountability right. perspective. And actually, I had everything but the big picture perspective because they were really horrible things that happened. Um, now, looking back on many of the things that were the most negative experiences in my life, all helped push me in this direction. Mm -hmm. And once I recognized what the direction was, pursuing it consciously, mm -hmm. for letting my positive feelings pull me along rather than going down a road that was painful and waiting for the pain to come. It, it's rapidly increased and falling back on courage, faith, compassion, uh, gratitude, all of these are the very positive emotions. Um, it just <laughs> allows things to occur and opportunities to be, it allows me to be aware of opportunities mm -hmm. that I never would have been aware of before and life is it just takes on a much faster pace and mm -hmm. I think that there's unlimited potentials for all of us yeah well we certainly glad that you are who you are so you could come tell us about it that we can learn things and I always tell the friends you know if you read something and uh, like we said earlier sometimes you have to experience what it is that you need to in other times, they are things very simple. If you could read about it, you can learn from it, and that saves you from having to go through these horrible experiences, like the same relationship over and over and over. No matter where you go or what you do, first thing out of everybody's mouth is, uh, I'm having trouble with my relationship, how do I fix it? And um, the people in my field, well, we don't know how to fix it either sometimes because uh, we just don't. Is that just the times that we live in? Um, on a quick note before we go, I'm looking for people that is, has allergies. 
Uh, no, uh, mostly Novocaine. So if somebody could uh, give me a call, and I would really like at least two people that is allergic to Novocaine, and then explore that um, a little further. And that's on, uh, I'm leave a cliffhanger that has to do the part I'm looking at is from an abduction point of view. Interesting. Um, in the next few weeks, we will do more UFO shows, and um, I'm going to go to Colorado and come back with some uh, interviews for the friends. In the meantime, I'm, it was really exciting, you know, to have you back here. And uh, well, thank you so much for having me. So I'm almost sure we're almost out of time. Um, I don't know how how are we? Are we doing okay on time? Well, I guess we per, uh, timed it perfect. Thanks for coming. Come and see us again next week. Uh, we wish you goodbye. It's part of why I plan it still. And if we do our part, it's a heart. Fill the wishes we've had from Thank you.